Okay, so get ready, because this deep dive is both terrifying and inspiring. Oh, absolutely. We're talking about 17-year-old Kahio Kawai. 17. Who spent a night clinging to his overturned kayak in the Pacific. You might have seen the headlines, you know. Oh, yeah. Teen rescued after a night lost at sea. Yeah. But we are going way beyond the surface here. It's one thing to hear someone survived, right? Well, it's another to understand how, and this isn't just some lucky escape. This gets into the psychology of staying calm under pressure. How even a teenager can use ocean currents to their advantage. It's incredible. So this all starts in, of all places, Honolulu, Hawaii. Waikiki Beach. Picture it. It's paradise. Right. You're not exactly in the middle of nowhere. Which is why this story is so interesting to me. So Kawhi's out there training with his high school paddling team out on his 20-foot surf ski when it capsizes. Okay, wait, back up. What, what is the surf? Is that like a really long kayak or something? Yeah, you got it. They're longer, narrower, built for speed. Mm. And in Kawhi's case, much less stable when a rogue wave decides to make an appearance. Yeah, that wave took his paddle, which is where the real trouble begins. So it's not just being in the water, it's that one tiny detail throws the whole thing into chaos. Suddenly he's at the mercy of the ocean. I'm getting chills just thinking about it. And this is where the story could have gone very differently. But what's fascinating is how Kawhi at just 17 taps into this like deep well of composure. Right. Night is closing in, he's alone. No life jacket. I mean, come on. Most people would be paralyzed by fear. Okay, I need to know, how do you even begin to wrap your head around that situation? It's dark. You're literally adrift. How does someone not completely panic? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? And while we don't have all the answers, we can piece together what likely went through Kwai's mind based on his actions and later accounts. He talks about accepting he couldn't fight the current, which was pulling him east away from Waikiki. So instead of exhausting himself trying to get back the same way, he uses that knowledge to his advantage. Yes. He lets the current carry him for a while, strategically using his energy. He knew that as the tide shifted, he might be able to kick back towards shore. This isn't just luck. This is a teenager thinking several steps ahead, understanding the ocean's rhythms in a way most adults wouldn't even grasp. It makes you realize how much we take for granted living on land. Like, we think we're in control. But out there, it's a whole different story. Hmm. Meanwhile, back on shore, a massive rescue operation is swinging into action, right? Absolutely. We're talking Coast Guard helicopters, fire department boats. They're combing the area. And to add even more pressure to the situation, one of the rescue boats searching for Kauai is carrying his own relative, a firefighter, who knows the waters just as well. Oh, wow. Are you serious? Uh, yeah. Talk about adding a personal layer to an already intense situation. It makes you wonder with all that coordinated effort, all those eyes scanning the waves, what were the chances of actually finding him in that vast expanse of ocean? It's a great question. And it's like, it gets at the heart of survival stories, doesn't it? We often focus on the skills, the preparation, but there's this undeniable element of chance that can tip the scales one way or another. So what happened? Did someone spot him from a helicopter? Or... Get this, at 14 a.m., nearly 12 hours after Kauai's surf ski capsized, a glimmer of hope appears. A good Samaritan spots him clinging to his overturned kayak. But here's the thing. Okay, you're going to have to tell me. It wasn't just any good Samaritan. It was his uncle, Nolan Kiolano, who just happens to be an off-duty lifeguard. you got to be kidding me. Out of everyone on the water, his own uncle and off-duty lifeguard finds him. I know, right? What are the odds? It makes you think about those what-if scenarios, you know? The sliding doors moments in life. Like, if his uncle hadn't decided to go out on the water that night, would Kawhi have been found? It's a chilling thought. And it really highlights that fine line between survival and tragedy in these kinds of situations. Thankfully, in Kawhi's case, there was a happy ending. They pulled him from the water, and although he was suffering from severe hypothermia, he was alive. Alive. And you know what really struck me? Even in the hospital, his first thoughts were about thanking everyone involved. The rescuers, the Coast Guard, the fire department, his family. He was overwhelmed with gratitude. That's incredible. After everything he'd been through, you'd understand if his first thought was just relief. But to focus on gratitude... That speaks volumes about his character. It's absolutely. And you know, there's a growing body of research about the powerful link between gratitude and resilience. It's not just about good manners. It's a powerful coping mechanism. When we focus on what we're grateful for, even in the darkest moments, it can help us find a glimmer of hope. Yeah, maybe that's part of what helped Kawhi stay so focused and determined throughout that. It's certainly a possibility. Gratitude has a way of shifting our perspective, right? Instead of dwelling on the negative, we start noticing the glimmers of hope the acts of kindness. 
And that shift in mindset can be incredibly powerful, especially in a survival situation. Totally. And it's not just gratitude, right? His knowledge of the ocean currents was crucial. Absolutely. Kawhi's story is a powerful reminder that knowledge isn't just power. It can be a lifeline. Imagine if he hadn't been familiar with those currents, if he'd panicked and tried to fight against them. He might have exhausted himself and slipped below the surface before anyone even knew he was gone. It's like the old saying, knowledge weighs nothing. But it can make all the difference in the world, especially when the stakes are high. Exactly. And you know, this idea of preparedness really resonates with me. We often think about survival in terms of physical strength or wilderness skills, but mental resilience, strategic thinking, even a basic understanding of the environment, these things can be just as crucial. So as we wrap up this deep dive into Kahiwa Kauai's harrowing night at sea, I think we're left with this renewed appreciation for the power of the human spirit. Absolutely. His story is a testament to that incredible resilience that we all possess. Even in the face of like overwhelming odds, our capacity for courage, ingenuity, and hope, it can shine through. And maybe it's a reminder that we all have our own inner reserves of strength. We might never face a challenge as daunting as being lost at sea, but life throws curveballs at us all. It certainly does. And when those challenges arise, it's comforting to know that we have the potential to tap into that same spirit of resilience that carried Kawhi through that long, dark night. It's a story that'll stay with me for a long time. And I have a feeling it might change the way we look at the ocean, at the world around us, and maybe even at ourselves. Couldn't agree more. Sometimes it takes a story like Kawhi's to remind us of the extraordinary that lies within the ordinary. The strength we didn't know we had, the resilience we might discover when we're pushed to our limits. So the next time you look out at the ocean, Take a moment to appreciate its vastness, mm -hmm. its power, and the incredible stories it holds. And remember, within each of us lies the potential for remarkable resilience. Mm -hmm. Just like Kahio Kawai, we might surprise ourselves with what we're capable of when we dig deep and never give up hope. Love that.